Hey guys, it's Brett from uradm.com and 789 Group. So I decided to kind of throw together an impromptu video about publication evaluation. And I know as being a publicist, there's millions of publications out there that you need to kind of keep track of. And let's be honest, there's so many times where uh, my client says, well, hey, what about this uh, publication? Should we get on this? And I'll say, what, who? That, that exists? All right, well, unfortunately, you know, those situations do happen. And it's always best to be able to evaluate these websites. Even if you don't understand their brand, it's good to understand how to do it objectively and to use tools to kind of back that up with data to really pinpoint your really awesome blogs and even to find those small gems and kind of see like, really evaluate things that you aren't 100% sure of. So today I decided that we should uh, evaluate two EDM publications that I'm actually familiar with and I thought they would kind of be good examples to uh, contrast. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and do this objectively. I, I do understand both these brands really well, but let's just take a look, assuming that we don't know who they are. So Dancing Astronaut right here. Let's just go ahead and first take a look at the website and the layout. Basically, you can see there's a lot of above the fold content, but it's probably not relevant to any clients you're working with. Um, if you go down, you can see a lot of its news announcements, etc. So there's not a whole lot of music on the front page and front page obviously is the most ideal placement you can get. So let's go ahead and take a look at their music section and see basically who they're posting and if it's, you know, their big names that are less likely, you know, to support you or if they're actually very open to, you know, the smaller artists and have a good sort of mix that'll kind of uh, at least uh, guarantee you a shot of placing where people are going to see it. So you can see they've got actually a pretty good mix and if you go down there's plenty of opportunities for placement. That's always a good thing in my opinion. Um, it looks like there's a lot of choice, which uh, is interesting for the user, but ultimately at the end of the day, you want to be somewhere where you're able to be seen. You want to get your guy placement where they're going to actually get the exposure. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at Be The Rave. As you can see, they kind of have a similar above the fold going on here, news and events. So let's kind of follow the same path, look down below the fold and see uh, kind of what's going on. All right, so, <coughs> excuse me. As you can see, there's not a lot of music going on here. Um, even on the side, it doesn't really seem that they, uh, there's a lot of news right here. Or sorry, a lot of music, excuse me. Um, same idea, they have a music section. And let's take a look and see how this is kind of laid out. And it's definitely a bigger feel. Um, everything has more space, but doesn't necessarily have more information. You have a blurb here, but for the most part, it seems like there's less stuff in more space. And that's kind of a bad thing in a way, is that when you are, you know, do hip placement and given their post frequency, that every time they post something new, that's going to push it down. So in my mind, that kind of is a uh, less than optimal uh, content placement. So say you get an artist posted here. By the end of the day, they may be so far down that, you know, no one's really going to actually see them. And let's go ahead and take a look then. It's a little bit of data behind each website. Alexa is obviously a great tool. I'm sure a lot of you have used it before. But um, let's just go ahead and walk through how you can get a little bit more insight into how their users uh, interact with the website, how many of them there are, and, you know, basically a little bit about their demographic. So obviously you can tell us it's a fairly big website. Um, in this range, you're looking at 6.4 and 15.1. Those are really respectable numbers. And I would guess that the traffic would be in the low millions to high hundred thousands per month. Um, daily time, about two minutes. It's not bad for a blog. And 1.9 to page views. So that means that you, let's round up and say that each viewer is checking out two pages. So that means that people are actually clicking around. Um, yeah, male demographic seems to be fairly educated right in here. And a lot of them are um, browsing from school and work and the important bit about the location is it should give you some insight into the timing of when people are actually looking at this site so between school and work hours it seemed that people are actually kind of at their desk and checking it out when they shouldn't be um, you can take a look that yeah the amount of traffic is about 61 percent from the US and India UK China Canada um, depending on where your clients based where their uh, kind of target demographic is can make a decent inference on what portion of the traffic is relevant to you. Um, another way that you can kind of take a look at the website and see really if they're an influencer, if they're a well-trusted source, is to evaluate the backlinks. 
Um, backlinks are basically just when another website links to them, whether it's a source or you know a directory or some sort of um, basically shout out. There's a lot of tools that do this. Um, the important thing is that you just find the tool that works for you. There's quite a few. Ahrefs is unfortunately a paid tool, um, but it's my favorite. You can also use Majestic or Moz's Open S or uh, yeah Open Site Explorer. And there's a couple add-ons that you can actually evaluate backlinks. The important thing is you just have a tool that can do it. So let's go ahead and take a look at Dancing Astronaut and see. Yep. So they have a huge amount of backlinks and a very good score and about 2,000 websites pointing at them. We can see what those websites are. We can kind of make an inference to see like you know, who is uh, really checking these websites out and who views them as a source. So. I'm just going to go to our top level stuff and just see, obviously, that they it should be pretty apparent that they are uh, really, really, really well respected in the scene. Um, you've got Wikipedia orgs, you've, uh, Wikipedia links, and um, you've got uh, stuff from Forbes, Reddit, uh, NPR, MTV. The list goes on and on. You can tell that these people are um, definitely well respected as an authority within the scene. And um, also, don't just look for your big stuff here. If you're familiar with other publications, look for those as well. Because if they're being sourced, that means they're on top of stuff. You know, they're obviously considered an influencer within the actual um, pond that you're looking in. And I won't go into their outgoing links. I think I'm going to save that for another video. But as you can see, let's go over here and evaluate these. As you can see, there's 620, which is not as many as 420,000. I'm not a math major, but I'm pretty sure that's less. As you can see there's um, not as many influencers or really top level stuff that you'd be looking for so that either kinda means that they're a newer website or they're just simply not doing something that uh, is grabbing them mention and I don't mean that in a deprecating way we're trying to look at this objectively and there's a reason that people don't link and it could be just about anything but we're kind of working through that. So let's go over here and <clears throat> take out another tool. Is um, Do they violate the number one rule of journalism? And that's do not plagiarize. That is the number one thing I like to look for as the site of, you know, kind of indication of quality. Is it, are they making original good stuff? So let's go ahead and take see if they have any sort of, a, you know, copyright sort of plagiarism thing going on here. And this is a free tool. Copyscape is great. Um, so you can see it only will show you the top 10, but you decent, like, usually get a decent sampling in here, and you can take a look and see what, uh, what percentage of their copy is present on another website. And rule of thumb, at least in my book, is about 15% or less is acceptable. Um, when you're talking about press releases and um, just general information getting shared, especially if it's like you know uniform information, um, yeah, it's pretty typical to have the same copy. So, as long as it's like less than about 15%, that means they're working on a decent amount of original content and they're not just scraping from other people. And I hope I can get it to load. Okay, so you can see right here, 43 words, 9%. Not a big deal. And you can kind of see it's from a, what appears to be like a you know, PR blast. That's, that's fine. Um, let's go ahead and just evaluate Dancing Astronaut and see if they're doing all right. And you know what, while we're doing that, while we're waiting for this to load, let's go ahead and take a look at the volume that uh, each website puts out. This is actually a really easy one. All you're going to do is type in site, colon, and then the URL. So we're going to go to btredm. And they have about 255 pages indexed. That's not very many for a blog. So that means either they're not pushing content, it's not getting properly indexed to Google. Um, so you can kind of see that either they're just starting out or you know they're just not a high volume publication and you should be able to kind of take your publicist instincts from there and make of that what you will let's take da on the other hand and we're looking at about thirty four thousand. so they've been doing work um typically with blogs the majority of your pages are articles so there are quite a few articles being pushed through there um Again, make of that what you will. Sometimes the high volume ones you might find easier placement on. They might have more staff, more people to approach and send your press releases to. 
that's generally <clears throat> excuse me a good indication of either length of website or amount of work and uh, hopefully Copyscape here is loaded up but if not no. let's see there we go As you can see DA has only pulled up two results and again it's the three percent seems to be a press blast again so that's that's well within accepted limits Another good way, if you want the history of a website, this is a really nice tool. Um, it's usually used for diagnosing Google penalties, but we can use it for a different purpose. Um, so again, go ahead, fill your information out, get that CAPTCHA finished. And then we see sort of a, a history of the website. We're going to go ahead and take our uh, penalties off because it's not really so useful to you. Um, so as you can see, They've been around for a while. Um, you can see lately they've had a huge increase in traffic and you know it kind of mellowed out to an average level. So what you're what you're seeing here is at least there's a general upwards curve. It's it's steady. They've been, you know, constantly improving and it seems that they've, you know, hit a very sustainable level. They're doing all right. It's it's not something where you're seeing a massive amount up here and then nothing. It, so it tells you that you know the website's still on a good to good direction. Um, these are really general numbers, but let's go ahead and just evaluate the final website, and I think that will do it. I don't want to talk your ear off, but I hope this has been uh, somewhat useful. So, as we can see, this is a very new site. We're talking from August to October. They've, you know, massive, massive, massive slope here. So that means it might be an investment site. Um, from what you know, is they don't really have established links. They're not that big yet, but you're seeing an increase in traffic. And you can kind of take with that, and maybe this is a publication that you should read around on a little bit more and get a little bit more familiar with, because they are increasing. And if you think it's an investment sort of opportunity, what I like to call it, is you might want to keep them on your radar and start digging around for contacts there and you know, keeping a tab on them. If it was the opposite way, though, we wouldn't probably be so keen to, you know, keep a tab. But I think in this case, it does show that the website's small but improving. And uh, I hope that this, um, this kind of gives you a better idea of how to evaluate stuff objectively. Um, there's data to back it up. And while it's not the most deep and, like, 100% spot on, it should give you somewhere to start. So I hope uh, if you at least learned something. And if you have any questions, please leave me a comment. And I'm happy to try to get back to you on it. So if uh, you think I missed anything, please leave a comment. And let me know what you'd like to learn if there's something around. Uh... Well, anyways, I'm just going to end it here. Thanks for listening, guys.